Stefan Tuitt has been away from this team for a whole year. There have been signs here and there that have said, Maybe he's coming back. The Steelers are working with him. They're not giving up on him. Obviously, you know, suffered the loss of his brother last year, dealt with a knee injury during the season. Things seem to be heading in the right direction here. According to the Athletics' Ed Bouchette, he spoke to Cam Hayward and general manager Kevin Colbert, who both sounded optimistic that Tuit will return. He's also back in the facility, according to Bouchette. Good signs. Are we, are we finally ready to say Stefan Tuitt's coming back? I think they're about as good a sign as you could possibly hope for. I mean, just talk about an awful collective storm of terrible stuff that happened to Stefan, you know, with his brother on top of the injury that happened last year. So definitely understand him needing to take some time away. Uh, but for Tuitt to be back in the facility to not only kind of get a vote of confidence from Cam Hayward, from Kevin Colbert, uh, and also, like I said earlier, to see him back in the facility, a very, very good sign. I don't think if he was considering retirement, he would be back in the facility. So, I mean, granted, like, you still really never know, especially with a guy like Tuit. Um, and you really don't want to, like, push him, like, either way on the spectrum. You know, you really yeah. want to respect him and what he ultimately wants to do. But, I mean, if I'm reading the tea leaves here, I'm very excited that Stefan Tuit looks like he's coming back for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2022. Yeah, no doubt. If it – Everything before this was like a, eh, okay, we're heading in the right direction. A phone call with Art Rooney, cool. I'm glad that he's talking. Phone call with Kevin Colbert, awesome, awesome. Things are still moving here. Back in the facility, Stefan Tewitt is not from here. He does not live here during the offseason. To say that he is back at UPMC Rooney Sports Complex, I feel like it's finally like, a, okay, things are rolling. Now, there could be a setback. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say like, oh, this is a guarantee, but I would say that this is the closest we've gotten to a solid, the Pittsburgh Steelers will have a starting defensive end in 2022 than we've been in a long, long time. Now, let me ask you this. If he does come back, miss the whole season. I mean, if you're any player in the National Football League and you sit out one season, people are saying it about Deshaun Watson. That's a big loss. That is a that Your body has completely forgotten what football is like, especially in the professional football league. Does it, is it guaranteed? Or I should just say, what is your feel of him coming back? Is he as dominant as he was? I mean, Stefan Tuit, when healthy, was, I mean, just as big of that def- part of that defensive line as Tyson Alualu and Cam He's a grown-ass man when he's healthy. That's what I'm saying. He's one of the best. Yeah. So is he still up there? Or I mean, he's 29 years old, missed the whole season. What are your thoughts on his effectiveness, I should say? I think the hope is that it's going to kind of be like riding a bike. You know, Uh, it won't take him too long to really get back in the groove of things. And uh, like you already alluded to, he took one year off and, you know, slice it however you want. That's still, you're still another year older by the time the the new football season comes around. But also, Stefan didn't take that that beating to his body every Sunday. You know, so I'm hoping at least right now, he feels a little bit fresher than he normally would heading into a new football season. Now, I I think he's in the system to where he can rely on guys like Cam and Aluwalu to kind of pick up any of the slack that he would have should it take him a little bit to get going. But no, I I think Stefan is a very good football player. I have no concerns about him over the course of a 17-game season really getting his feet back underneath him. Um, But that just might be my high expectations for him. He could easily go out. And just not look like the guy he once was, looking like a shell of uh, of uh, you know the former Pro Bowl defensive end that we once saw. So the only thing that worries me is he is a guy who has an injury history and did not play football for a whole year. Your body is not ready to take the hits that it's about to hit, and you are take. And you can say, oh well, he didn't play for a whole year. That's better on the body. I agree with that, but at the same time. He came in last season and Keith Butler was not shy in saying that he was out of football shape. That means that he had to work his way back into shape, which means that his body already went through a little bit of like a mm, beat up, kind of get it rolling type situation. I don't know. I'm, I would like to see, or like to say that I am optimistic that Stefan to it could be Stefan to it. I don't guarantee that he one could play a whole 17 game season 
as well as he used to be able to. That was already kind of tough for him, like you said, before he took a year off. That's what I'm saying. Like he, he already dealt with injuries, like big injuries here and there to say, Oh, he's going to keep it going. Like he's going to come back and be a hundred percent healthy and a hundred percent ready to go. And his body's going to be good enough to last him a whole season. Nah, I I don't know. I'm that, that leaves me worried. I'll never say a player is going to get hurt. That'll never come out of my mouth. And I'll never say that he's going to be worse than he once was, but there is definitely more concern than I think people have. in just a whole, he comes back, he fixes everything. I still think that you need somebody else behind him. So, so technically the only year of his career where he played all 16 games was his rookie season in 2014. Uh, He played, this is year by year chronologically, uh, 14 games, 14 games, 12, then 14. Then he had the injury in 2019 where he only played six. And then 2020, whenever he came back, he played 15 out of the 16, but if I remember correctly, the Steelers sat a lot of their starters in uh, preparations for the Cleveland playoff game that year. So yeah, I, yeah, I really yeah. wouldn't like count that against him. No, no, it was a good season. I mean, that's but he yeah. showed. I think that was the time that he showed, like, hey guys, like when I'm out here, man, I am one of the best. I am the reason that this defensive line is this good. I don't disagree with that. I just mean that coming off that. I mean, I hope the game's rolling. I hope the ball is rolling in the right direction here, and that he doesn't have to worry about that. But let me ask. He's back. There are some worries. Do the Steelers have what it takes behind him to feel good enough going into the season with Stefan to as their starter? Honestly, man. Yeah. I, I, I really like, I'm, okay. I don't want to say I'm a fan of this depth, but like I'm comfortable with it. Um, no. So you have at defensive tackle, you have Cam Loudermilk and Carlos Davis. At nose tackle, you have Alualu, Henry Mondu, and Monty Adams, who just re-signed. And then at defensive end, you have Tua and then Chris Wormley. It, especially with like how high the team has been with Loudermilk. And like you have to think too, like the Steelers aren't in a whole lot of their base defense. Uh, you know, they're mostly in kind of like that that nickel package. So guys like Loudermilk, guys possibly like Mondu and Monty Adams. Uh, or even like Carlos Davis could slide over into his spot if absolutely needed for a couple of plays. Um, I'm I'm comfortable. I really, really am. Now, is that me saying I'm passing up Jordan Davis at pick number 20? No, no, not no at way. all. But if need be, if to it needs to be on a snap count to kind of get his body reacclimated to you know the, the harsh hits of playing defensive line in the NFL. I'm not worried about Isaiah Loudermilk, Milk, excuse me. I'm not worried about Mondu or Chris Wormley because I, I, I've seen those guys kind of hold their own in previous years. And I'm not saying they're all pros. I'm not saying they're pro ballers, but just as like a collective unit, I don't mind it. I really don't. Okay, so I am a little bit worried. There, okay. there are reasons to feel good about it. I like Chris Wormley. I think Chris Wormley is a great backup. And like people gave him a lot of a lot of slack last year. For the role that he was pushed into, I think Chris Wormley played just fine. Now, is he like a starter every single game? No. But I think for two or three games in a row, if Stephon it can't play, that's a great guy to have as your primary backup. Loudermilk, I have to see more of. I think he's got such a bright future, much brighter than people expected, myself included. That being said, his rookie season was very hit or miss. And I think that he's a fifth-round pick. He's got to grow, but we need to see that growth. Henry Mondu, look at I love Henry Mondu. He's the quietest, most gentle man in the whole world. He is not that great of a football player. Very third on the depth chart, good at football. Monty Adams is a great backup as well. I think Monty Adams came in here, played phenomenal for what he was asked to do. Nose tackle position, super easy in football. Tyson Alawalu being 35 years old worries me a lot. I just think that the only piece that they're missing is is that guy that could slide pretty much anywhere online. I don't think that they have that guy. The Steelers think they have that guy, and that's the guy you're not sold on is Loudermilk. The Steelers do think that. That's yeah. very true. That is very yeah. true. But I don't think he's there yet. I think that he's still such a work in progress. I mean, people call him the next Cam Hayward. Like, dude, Cam Hayward didn't even start every game his, his rookie season. Loudermilk's a fifth-round pick. Like, he shouldn't start every game until his fourth season. I just think I, I think that he's still such a work in progress that you need somebody else. And, and I'm not saying it has to be somebody that's like first round draft pick, 
But I think that one more guy to be like, okay, look it. Say, say Alawalu goes down mm -hmm. or Cam goes down, God forbid, or two, it can't play a game or two. Yep. They have that one backup. They need that other guy that, like, say louder milk just isn't getting yeah. the job done. He could come in. That's what okay. I'm looking for. That's I, the only I, way I don't I feel see, comfortable about. I see your point to where it's kind of like top heavy. On, Super on top chart, heavy. And it's, yeah. it's easy to feel comfortable when you're not plugging these guys in for a large amount of games in the season. I'm sure my opinion would change. But, I mean, just like just looking at the list of guys right now compared to guys like Isaiah Bugs and like Daniel McCullers is another like throwback name. I feel a lot more comfortable with <laughs> these guys. McCullers. Plugging and Big playing. Dan. Yeah, very true. Very true. It has definitely gone uphill since Big Dan. That being said, I just think that, you know, the Steelers have proven the last five years that once somebody goes down, it's like the whole thing shuts up. Yeah. This year, they got to figure that out because they are getting old. Whether they want to admit it or not, they are getting really, really old on the defensive line.